In Three Kingdom Total War's 194 campaign, if you start as Cao Cao, you hear a lengthy prologue about Lu Bu's rebellion. However, when you look at the situation, Lu Bu only took a portion of your land, so it looks like nothing. In this young Chun event is everything that happened. As you might have expected, the game's description of the state is far from real, and the situation was much more serious for Cao Cao. So, let's look at how secondary sources talk about this Yan province rebellion. Let's start with the title of Cao Cao. At the start of 193, Cao Cao was a self-proclaimed governor of Yan province. Though not official, the local administrators acknowledged it, and he was in de facto control of the area. Due to the warlord's relationship with Dong Zhou and Li Jue, this was a common thing among the warlords. According to HHS, Yan province's de jure consists of 8 commanders and 80 counties. Numbers sound big enough, but in the game? Nah. Every other province took a portion of Yan province, and these three are the only settlement with names from Yan province. If you want a map with some historical source, this is from the Historical Atlas of China, and the red line is the jure of Cao Cao. Then, in the summer of 193, Tao Qian attacked Cao Cao and took this land. Details are complete and located different source by source, but it was around this time when the killing of Cao Song happened. When Chao Song was moving from Tao Qian's Su province to Chao Chao's Yan province, Tao Qian sent Zhang Kei and he killed Chao Song. This led Chao Chao into war with Tao Qian and it's quite known. However, there was another subplot in it. Dude, make sure my father reaches my land safe and sound, okay? Don't worry, unlike you, I'm official administrator of Tishan, and I managed to rule this land for 5 years without a problem. Once, I even defeated 300,000 yellow turbans all by myself. What's the worst thing that can happen? Any last words? <coughs> so he abandoned his commandery and ran for his life into the clutch of Wan Xiao. Now the battle of Su province is not the main topic here, so I will just briefly mention some of it. Chao Chao retakes the Rush territory, goes inside the Su province, and kills lots of people. I mean, real real rats, and talking about the scale of corpses filling the river and stopping the current. In the summer of 194, when this bloody war was still hanging on, a rebellion broke out in the Chao Chao's home base. The scale of rebellion? All of them. Out of 80 counties in the Yan province, only 3 remained loyal to Chao Chao. Now, let's talk about why they rebelled and the cause of the rebellion. The capital commander of the Yan province is Chen Liu commandery. The administrator there was a one called Jiang Miao. As his traits suggest, he had many friends, such as Wen Xiao and Cao Cao. Jiang Miao was a lady and official Chen Liu administrator when the Dongzhou coalition war broke out. He was the one who sponsored Cao Cao, giving the army, money, etc. After that, Cao Cao became governor of Yan province, making Jiang Miao a subordinate to him. Now that's step one for Jiang Miao. Then, Jiang Miao friendly advised Wen Xiao to stop being so arrogant. Hearing that, Wen Xiao ordered Cao Cao, an ally of him, to kill Jiang Miao. Cao Cao was similar to the vassal of Wen Xiao at some point, but refused. Jiang Miao was grateful to Cao Cao, and they became BFFs. But there was still doubt inside Jiang Miao's mind, so that's stack 2. Now, we have to talk about another main player of the rebellion, Lu Bu. Soon after killing Dong Zhou, Lu Bu was kicked out of the capital Jiang'an by the Riang guys, who were the former subordinates of Dong Zhou. Lu Bu fled to the Nanyang, and it was the May of 192. Wen Xiu was the one controlling the Nanyang, and Lu Bu's speech was like this. Dong Zhou killed your family members, and I killed Dong Zhou. You owe me a favor. So, Wen Xiu let Lu Bu stay, but Lu Bu's forces started to loot the country. So, Wen Xiu murmured something like this. <sighs> I shouldn't have expected so much for that father killer. So, Lu Bu fled once more into the Hanei. Jiang Yang was the administrator of Hanei. Since Li Jue put a bounty on Lu Bu's head, Jiang Yang's underlings were inclined to get the good money. Upon recognizing this movement, Lu Bu invoked Guan Xi by telling Jiang Yang that he and Jiang are both from Bing province. Jiang Yang teamed up with Lu Bu. During their attack, Lu Jue reconciled with Lu Bu and appointed Lu Bu as an administrator of Liangchan. This Jiang Yang story is the historical base of this event. However, Yinchan was under the influence of Wan Xu at that time, with cooperation from these guys. So, Lubutin plots his claims, had some historical base, but didn't happen. Instead of going south, he joined Wan Xiao's battle with Jiang Yan. And he did this. Here is the forewarning from HHS. 
Zhang Yan had more than 10,000 soldiers and 10,000 of cavalrys. Lu Bu had red hair that was capable of ripping the moat. Lu Bu led an onslaught into the Zhang Yan's camp with Zhang Yan, Wu Yu, and only dozens of cavalrys. Sometimes he even made this kind of charge three to four times a day. On each onslaught, he killed all of them and then left the enemy's camp. He did this for 10 days and finally crushed Zhang Yan's force. Lu Bu switched into his troop form. Then requested more troops and his soldiers lavished the countryside. So, Wen Xiao refused the more troops request, then sent an assassin to kill Lu Bu. Lu Bu escaped from this assassination attempt. Doing that, Wen Xiao ordered his troops to pursue them. But no one dared to pursue this, so he survived. Fun fact, after Lu Bu fled, Wen Xiao's campaign against Zhang Yan concluded as a failure and Zhang Yan won. On his flight to Henei, Lu Bu did a little detour and visited Chen Niu. Do you remember the administrator of Chen Niu? Yes, Xiang Miao. Do you remember his trait? Friend to all. So, he even made a father killer a friend of his own. Lu Bu left for Henei soon after, but this story goes into the ears of Wen Xiao as well. Now more furious than ever, Wen Xiao pressed Cao Cao once more to execute Jiang Miao. Now, there's three stacks for Jiang Miao. Furthermore, Chen Gong, a trusted officer of Cao Cao, incited Jiang Miao by saying, You have 100,000 troops, Cao Cao is far from here, and your friend Lu Bu is the best fighter. Why content as the underling of someone? Now that's four stacks and Zhang Miao labored, enthroning Lu Bu as a new governor of Yang province. Okay, this explains why Zhang Miao labored. But what about the other seven commanders of Yang province, especially Chen Gong? If you know the past achievement of Chen Gong, this becomes more strange. At first, Cao Cao was only a de facto administrator of the Dong commandery. It was Chen Gong who convinced other rulers to enthrone Cao Cao as the governor of the whole Yan province. That is why Cao Cao put Chen Gong in the charge of defending the Dong commandery when he was out to attack Tao Qiang. Why would a guy like that bring revolt to a whole province? As an biography of Lu Bu, Zhang Liang said, Because he started to dub Cao Cao. But it does not say why he started to dub Cao Cao. Because Cao Cao massacred so many people? It could have contributed some of it. But there is no word directly linking the massacre to the Yan province rebellion. Funny enough, the answer came from the mouth of Wan Xiao. Just before the so famous Battle of Guangdu, Wan Xiao made a proclamation that includes all the crimes Cao Cao ever made. Following quotation includes what we are looking for. Bianyang was a great person, but just because he advised honestly, Cao Cao killed him and annihilated his family. Because of that, scholars were indignant and peasants cried in resentment. As a result, the whole province stands against Cao Cao as a band of brothers. Who is this Ben Yang guy and why was everyone upset about his death? He has his own biography in HSS and this is the abstract. He was a good leader and the most famous one was a godly one. Ha Jin, Gong Long, and Wang Lang all liked him. Cha Yong strongly recommended him, calling him Cauldron suitable for beef soup. He later became administrator of the Zhejiang commandery, but he was a bad ruler. Later, he abandoned his position and returned to his hometown, Chen Niu. Ben Yang knew his talent was cherished, so he insulted Cao Cao. So, Cao Cao killed him. That's the end of his biography. Although this is a propaganda made by Wan Xiao, it's the only one that describes the cause of a full province rebellion. If we can believe this, it means in that era, one church rider's death with more than a hundred thousand peasants. Now, back to the rebellion. Although the situation was like this when Cao Cao returned, but it does not mean 77 counties out of 80 counties labeled simultaneously. First, there is Taishan. He did slip out from Cao Cao's grasp, but for a different reason. Taishan was the battleground in the war between Cao Cao and Cao Qian. Then, the administrator there abandoned Taishan commandery and ran for his life. In this unaccounted confusion, a bandy named Zhang Bao came from the Langyang commandery and took Taishan commandery. So, you can leave Taishan out of the equation in this battle between Cao Cao and Lu Bu. For this achievement, Zhang Bao gained this cool title in TK Total War and has this big territory in the game. But, Xie overbuffed Zhang Bao's territory. Both Pu Yang and Dong Piang were not a Zhang Bao territory. And Pu Yang was a major battlefield between Cao Cao and Lu Bu in their first match which I will talk about in a second. Then, there was Dong Commandery, the very hard land of Cao Cao. Chen Gong was indeed in charge of the defense of the Dong Commandery, but Cao Cao left Xiao Dun as an administrator, so the commander's capital Puyang was still in control. Thus, 
Charter Ranch was still holding these four counties when the rebels revolted in the summer of 194. Starting from the left side, each circle represents Puyang, Zhuacheng, Fan, and Dong. The surrounding area would look like this. Yellow River's course is different between now and then, so keep that in mind. When the rebellion broke out, Zhuacheng stood Nun called Xiadun for help, saying there is so much mutiny in the Zhuancheng and they can handle them by self. Since Chao Chao's family was in the Zhuancheng, Xiao Dun hurried to the rescue. On the way, he met Lu Bu's forces, and there was a short battle. Xiao Dun repelled Lu Bu, but upon learning Xiao Hu is away from his capital, Lu Bu took now defenseless Puya. Xiao Dun goes inside the Zhuancheng castle, and successfully sealed out all the mutineers inside the Zhuancheng. But there was another problem. Some guys came through the Zhuancheng and offered surrender, maybe refuge or something? Then they kidnapped Xiao Dun and said something like this Give me everything you got or Xiao Dun gets it. Then Xiao Dun's adjutant Han Hu stepped in and said, I will not let any of you traitors step out alive because of some petty general. This response wasn't the thing kidnappers were expecting. This isn't any general, it's Xiao Dun, Cao Cao's most trusted general and relate of his. Then Han Hu said, Sorry, boss, lows are lows, at least you died for the country. Rest in peace. He stepped in and mercilessly killed every last one of them. Luckily, some of the traitors were begging for his forgiveness by saving the life of Xiao Dun. So, Xiao Dun managed to survive. And yes, Han Hu even killed these Laskers too. Around this time, neighboring new provinces inspector Guo Gong visited Zhuancheng, accompanying tens of thousands of troops. Keep in mind, brown territory on the map is only the jewelry of Yu province. There is so little information about this Guo Gong guy, so we don't know how was his territory like. And we even don't know whether he's an official one from the government, or one appointed by Wan Xu, or a subordinate of Chao Chao. Anyway, he requested an audience with Sun Yu. Xiao Dun suspected it was a trap, saying Guo Gong already have teamed up with Lu Bu's guys. I mean, he was kidnapped and was almost dead a few seconds ago. However, Sun Yu's opinion was different. He claimed Guo Gong had yet to decide which side to stand on, and is testing whether he could bite a few terrorists out of us in this turmoil. So Sun Yu personally had a meeting with him, and showed how strong the defenses of Zhuancheng Castle was, and how the remaining forces of Cao Cao are standing together. Convinced by this, Guo Gong agreed to stay neutral in this war. So Guo Gong's problem is solved, and there are no defilers anymore in the Zhuancheng Castle, but other problems still exist. First, Lu Bu's main forces are coming for the Zhuancheng Castle. Second, Fan Yi is coming to take the Fan County and the rumor is saying that the prefect of Fan's loyalty is wavering. Third, Chen Gong is coming to the Dong'a from the other side of the river, and other forces are attacking Dong'a as well. Now this is the strategy they made up. While Xiao Dun, Su Nyu, and Su Ti stand guard, Chen Yu is sent as a relief force to other two counties. Upon reaching the Fan County, Chen Yu found out that the rumor was true indeed. Prefect of the Fan County, Jin Yun's loyalty was wavering. Since every part of the Yan province is now in Lu Bu's hands, Jin Yu's mother, brother, wife, and children are kept hostage by Lu Bu. In Confucianist culture, filial piety is of utmost important virtue. Even the part of the recommendation system is named filial piety. So, some leaders let guys who fell into frustration like Jin Yu go to the enemy side to show their benevolence. Maybe Jin Yu was expecting something like, Oh, that can't be helped. I'll take care of here, so you live here and do what you must do. But no, this guy is Chang Yu. Who cares about your stupid mother? With your sacrifice, the world can have Chao Chao. No wonder why he got this cool trait. But would Jin Yun listen to this absurd demand? He did. He ambushed Fan Yi's forces and killed Fan Yi, then defended Fan County till the Chao Chao arrived. Defending Pan Castle? Check. Then Chang Yu hurried to the Changting crossing with cavalry and occupied it. Chang Gong arrived too late and saw that the crossing is taken. He couldn't have to perform battle by crossing the river, so he retreated, blocking Chang Gong. Chuck. When Chang Yu arrived at Dong, the prefect of Dong and Zhao Ji was doing an awesome job and defending there all by himself. Chuan Chang, with the Lu Bu's attack, till Chao Chao's main force arrived, and it was the payback time. Analyzing the situation, Chao Chao laughed out loud. This Lu Bu guy took every part of Yan province. Even then, instead of occupying Dongping and closing off every strategical point of Renshang and Taishan, he ran into the city walls of Puyang without trying a single interception. <laughs> this guy is no match for me. Moreover, with the help of a local named Tian, he managed to skip the sea space. 
While Cha Chao is attacking the Puyang with his main forces, Yellen Yujin led another army to attack Luba's southern encampment. Then, the fight began. After entering the Puyang castle, Cha Chao opened the gate just to show, There's no way back and you're attacking this castle. I mean, nobody's going to try retreating through this flaming gate, right? But, as soon as Lubu led an onslaught upon Cao Cao's Qingzhu warriors, Qingzhu troops began to rout. Who cares about the burning gate when the Lubu is upon us? Cao Cao was also on the run, but he was caught by one of the Lubu's cavalry. When all was about to end, this cavalry said to Cao Cao, Dude, do you know which one is Cao Cao? Cao Cao pointed to somebody and said, The one on the yellow horse! So, he could survive. After that, he was in front of the very gate he burned himself. While passing it, he fell from the horse and burned his left hand. This time, one of his subordinates named Louis helped him to get on the horse. So he was saved once again. Even then, the chase was still not over. This time, Dianui came in to help. He was holding more than 10 spears and he threw them to enemies whenever they came close. Thanks to Dianui, Cao Cao was saved and was able to return to his camp. While Eugene achieved victory, it was a devastating defeat. Cao Cao's soldiers thought he was dead for sure, and Xiao Dun lost his eye in this battle. But there was no time to waste. Cao Cao showed everybody his safe and sound, and ordered the troops to build siege engines. To successfully win Eugene, Cao Cao gave him a detached force and ordered him to attack Su Chang. Hundred days passed, and Puyang was still steadfast. The good news is, the Eugene occupied Su Chang. Furthermore, Cao Hong and Eugene conquered Xu Jiang with the help of Cao Cao. This means Cao Cao had retaken the Dongping commandery, but this was it. He couldn't break through the defenses of Puyang, and he was on the losing side for sure. To make things worse, a huge famine had arrived due to locusts. It was very critical to Cao Cao, who had lots of mouths to feed and had less land to provide it. Lu Bu and Cao Cao agreed to cease fire around July to August of 194. Lu Bu went to Xianyang to get the food, but Cao Cao had nowhere to go. The situation in Cao Cao's forces was so dire that even gathering rations from a single county is recorded as an achievement of that person. If you want numbers, the price of one hu of grain skyrockets to 500,000. Cao Hong gathered food from Fang County and Dongping Commandery. Cheng Yu and Zhao Ji were after the Dong'e County. Cheng Yu's home county was Dong'e, so it was normal choice, but the kind of ration he brought was abnormal. Human Flash Yeah, he definitely deserves this trait. At this gloomy moment, Wang Xiao sends an offer to Cao Cao. Dude, what are friends for? Send your family members to me, and I'll take good care of them. Cao Cao seriously considered this. Then, Cheng Wu came in and said, He's basically saying that. Why vote to someone worse than you? So, Cao Cao refused Wang Xiao's offer, and stayed determined. This time, battle starts a little bit southern. Cao Cao managed to persuade Li clans in the Changxi, such as Li Quan, Li Jin, and Li Suji. In September 194, Lu Bu tried to retaliate against the traitors, but he was the one who pushed back. After the failed invasion, Lu Bu drew another local noble named Sui Lan and Li Fang into his coat. They managed to kill Li Quan, but Chang Xi was still Cao Cao's. This was a good sign. It meant the integrity of their alliance was wearing down, and Lu Bu had no power to stop it. In January of 195, Cao Cao launches an attack against Lu Bu. He let Cao Ren attack Zhu Yang County, while Cao Cao himself is attacking Ding Tao County, the capital of Ji In Commandery. Wu Ji, administrator of the Ji In Commandery, kept the castle faithfully, and Cao Cao couldn't get over his wars. He could defeat the Lu Bu's relief force, and Cao Ran conquered Zhu Yang County, but the castle of Ding Tao stood steadfast, and Cao Cao had to retreat to Changxi. Then, interesting news slipped into Cao Cao's ear. The governor of Su province, Tao Kiang, died in 194, just a few months earlier. A guy named Lu Bi succeeded him and became a de facto governor of Su. Now, this made Cao Cao ponder. Succession crisis always happen, and this opportunity is too tempting to ignore. And the battle against Lu Bu wasn't going well. Maybe Cao Cao was thinking of letting Lu Bu fight against this alliance while he was conquering Su Zhu. Then, Su Niu heard about Cao Cao's plan to attack Su Zhu and advised him. Su Niu said this idea was terrible because of lovely two reasons. First, if you leave too many men in Yan province, you will lose to Liu Bi. If you take too many men, it's this again. Second, Suzhou people hate you. You did this to them just to be a fool. This advice made Cao Cao determined. In the summer of 195, Cao Cao led an attack on Zhu Ya County where Zhu Lan and Li Fang is defending. This time, Lu Quan's son Li Zhang was accompanying Cao Cao. Zhu Lan guys were the one who killed Lu Quan, so they had personal feelings. Lu Bu went to the rescue again, and he was defeated again. Soon after, 
Chao Chao and Li Jiang killed Su Lan and takes over Zhu Ya County. After this, Chao Chao spreads his troops far and wide to harvest summer barley. He was still suffering from food shortage after all. Liu Bu thought this was a chance and makes an all in. With Chen Gong, he gathered more than 10,000 forces and marched into Zhu Ya County. Liu Bu's logic was not wrong. At this time, Chao Chao only had less than a thousand men. Chao Chao left the castle defense to the woman and gathered what he could to intercept Lu Bu. The battlefield was like this, huge force in the south and dike in the west. Seeing this, Lu Bu said to his people, Chao Chao is a cunning foe and there is sure to be a hidden soldier in the dense forest. And he set out in his camps far from the forest. Chao Chao, the cunning foe, figured out what Lu Bu was exactly thinking. First, he set out half of the army in the front. Then, Here's the rest of the army behind the dike. When Lu Bu's force begins the attack on the Chao Chao, they were busy looking at the right side. Real hidden soldiers climb the dike and flank Lu Bu's soldier from the left. Lu Bu's army was shattered. Chao Chao and his army laid them down to the Lu Bu's encampment. This battle was critical. Lu Bu and Chang Gong had abandoned Yan and fled to Suzhou looking for a safe haven. After this, it was more like a map up rather than a full battle. Chao Chao, Chao Hong, and Yu Jin takes Ding Tao, conquering the Jin commandery. Then, Yu Jin goes to Li Hu, while Chao Chao, Chao Hong, and Yu Jin attack Pu Yang, thus conquering most of the Dong commandery. Finally, Chao Hong conquers the Sanyang commandery. At the same time, Chao Chao's ally, Wan Xiao and Jiang Hong, to take over part of Dong commandery located north of the Yellow River. Now, most of the Yan points are recovered by Chao Chao, and only Zhang Miao is standing lonely in the Chen Nu commandery. But, You know this guy, he's never alone. So, while his younger brother Zhang Chao is defending the Yongqiu castle, he set out for Yuan Xu for help. Furthermore, do you remember Zhang Honggai who was sent to the northern part of the Dong Commandery by Yuan Xiao? These three were BFFs. So Zhang Chao was expecting aid from Zhang Hong. In August 195, Chao Chao, Yu Jin, and Yu Jin laid siege upon Zhang Chao. Of course, Zhang Hong wanted to go, but Yuan Xiao denied it saying Chao Chao is an ally after all. So Jiang Hong revolted and Wan Xiao came to suppress him, but it's a story that comes after today's story's ending. Jiang Miao was killed by his men when he was on the way to the Wan Shu. In October 195, with the help of Wang Bi and Zhong Yao, Chao Chao became the official governor of Yan province. December 195, without any help, Jiang Chou committed suicide. Chao Chao seized the Yongqiu castle and killed Jiang Miao's three sets of relatives. That was the end of two years of prolonged Yan province rebellion. Conan to the three counties, watching the glimpse of death three times a day, had to strip up everything they can, almost became father of another guy, not perfect, but he had survived. The end.